Hello everyone, welcome to today's Novage webinar, Vectorworks Models Brought to Life with Artlantis. Artlantis is the perfect software for Vectorworks users, allowing them to present their projects with 3D photorealistic renderings. Artlantis 2020, the latest version of uh, Advanced Standalone Rendering and VR Imaging application, boasts a number of new features elevating your architectural visualizations to new heights. Get ready for a one-of-a-kind presentation guest starring CAD guru, Jonathan Pickup. And with Jonathan, Ildiko Zabo. Ildiko is trained as an architect and has been a member of the Advent team since 2001. And she is a huge experience in architectural visualization. Just wait and see. And Jonathan is trained as also an architect uh, in both New Zealand and the UK. And he has over 30 years of experience and his company, Archon CAD, is the premier provider of third-party manuals and training resources for Vectorworks. And let me tell you a little bit about Novage. Novage is changing the way designers purchase 3D software, offering more choices, more freedom, best advice, faster services with no headaches whatsoever. Check us out at novage.com where you can even um, see right now we have a special for Artlantis. So for any vector work users, um, write me, Barbara at novage.com with your, uh, prove to me that your vector work using, user um, serial number will suffice and you can get a coupon to save $100 on Artlantis. This is a limited time offer, so um, till the end of the month. And uh, I want to remind you that this uh, session is going to be recorded, so um, you can watch it again later on YouTube and Vimeo. And now, without further ado, I'm going to start sharing Jonathan's screen so he can introduce you to the beautiful model he created for Eldico. Take it away, Jonathan. Thank you, Barbara. So I just thought I'd go through the, the way I've created my model. I've got a site plan. I have a floor. I've got a downstairs. I've got an upper floor. And I've created my roof. Let's just turn all those on so we can see them all together. So this is the model I've created. It's actually a real project that we've got going on. And the shape of the building is limited by some of the site constraints that we've got. So we just have a little spin around the building. So there we are at the moment. It's our building. We've got three different cladding systems on there. And you can see that I've already started to think about visualizing it. So I've already started to apply textures and like glass balcony. We've got the different cladding systems on the building. So we are starting to think about the textures that we want to put on there. Now, the way that we're going to export, we're going to export the entire model. I've actually deleted all the drawings so that, that you, I don't want to get involved in all the drawings. but I have been uh, very careful about the creation of my objects and assigning objects to classes. So if we have a look at floor one, for example, and we have a look at the balustrade, the balustrade has a specific class assigned to it. Uh, it's on the wall balustrade class. The cladding of the wall is a separate 3D object with a specific class assigned to it. So I've been quite careful about making sure that any materials that I want to export into Atlantis have got the correct class assigned. We're using classes to connect materials in my model to materials in Atlantis. Atlantis has a dedicated export function in Vectorworks. It's available from the Atlantis website. You need to install it. So you need to download it. It's a zipped file. You need to install it into your Vectorworks. And you'll, you might need to add it to your workspace. I'm using a customized workspace. You might notice that my tools are slightly different. Um, and you end up with this export function down the bottom here. There are some Artlantis preferences that we might want to use. So we can change the way that the shaders are linked to the model. I'm using classes to connect to my materials. I could use colors, but I found that classes work much better with my drawing system. If I use classes to assign objects to their um, or to assign materials to objects, then it also works with the way that I set up my drawing so I can turn bits or turn classes on and off. All my objects in the none class are going to be exported, and objects are going to retain their own classes, if any, when I do that plugin objects. So that's my export that I installed. 
So the materials of the object, this should bring up a dialog box. This is all my materials down here. These are all the classes that have or will use materials. And we go back to export over here. So this assign object material, it's just gonna tell you to, to use the object info palette to assign materials. And then when I've got the model ready and I want to export it, I'm going to export it to Atlantis. Now the beauty of this uh, export connection is that if I update the model, I can export the updated model again, and I don't have to lose or I don't have to start from the beginning and build the whole materials together again. So it does allow me to export the model, carry on working on the model, ex just update the export, and then I can open up my uh, Atlantis and I can see the model growing or I can see the new parts of the model. Um, now, Ildeco is going to cover that part of it, so I'm not going to cover all that part of it or the technical detail of that. I just wanted to show you what we've got here. We've got this it's a rather cool model. It's on a steep site, um, and we've just got a little fly around, and then I'm going to export it. So we do have the question box open. Uh, if you've got questions, I'm going to keep my eye on the question box. So if you guys have got a question, uh, I'll, if I can answer it, I will. Otherwise, at the right point, I might interrupt. Ildeco and get uh, Ildeco to answer those questions. So that's the model we've got. A little bit complex. It's been quite a challenge with our height restrictions that we've got. And straight away, I noticed that I've made a couple of mistakes. No one's uh, picked it yet, but I've got a rather large bit of roof where I forgot to model the column and the beam to support it. So uh, we're hoping against hope that that part of the roof will stay up. So I'm going to fix that. Now, uh, while Ildeco uh, does the rendering, I'm going to have to fix part of my model, and then we'll have to uh, re-export it. So, Barbara, cool. I think yes. I've done I, I, Yes, I'm going to share Ildeco's screen so she can take it, take it from here. Okay. I'm ready, so I'm ready to start by... Jonathan will fix uh, the, the problem with the model. I am ready to take over the exported model in Atlantis. You already are in Atlantis. You see the model in uh, the preview window of Atlantis, which looks almost white. However, I have the whole list of material Jonathan showed you, uh, which uh, represent different faces uh, set with different finishings, cladding, so forth. Uh, but the model for the moment looks quite white, so let me do my first presentation in a few clicks already. Let's make it convert it completely white model because uh, Atlantis has a engine specifically to prepare a white model uh, from your uh, building which is very appropriate here uh, because uh, even the mesh uh, on which uh, the, the house is, stays uh, is roughly partially modeled so it uh, will turn into a kind of maquette so uh, let me switch uh, the proportion for the preview window and uh, add some uh, ambient occlusion to emphasize the reliefs, uh, increase the intensity, okay, and uh, even more because this white model is able to um, emphasize the transparent surfaces as well. So I will change um, the window transparency make it transparent okay this is the uh, balcony and now the windows will be do the same so this will be our first presentation to do with uh, i will enlarge a little bit the preview window and here it is uh, the preview is refreshing and uh, we will have the final outlook of this first uh, um, camera view, let's say. So the ambient occlusion was applied. As you see, the real-time preview window is the key feature of Atlantis. So anything I'm doing in Atlantis is instantly um, displayed in this preview. I have this uh, very reliable feedback at any moment after each step. So, one presentation is ready, this white maquette, let me continue, however, 
to set up a photorealistic presentation uh, because this is the first of all what we are doing uh, in Atlantis. Okay, so I switched to the photorealistic engine of uh, Atlantis. I'm changing a little bit the camera view. I'm navigating the camera view can be easily manipulated right in the preview. That makes my life very easy. Of course, Atlantis has a 2D window uh, in, with different uh, top side uh, views. However, it's easier to, to work in this uh, way. Let me change the sun quickly, make it brighter, this part of the um, facade to see uh, easier. Okay, and I open my uh, catalog, my library, to set different materials on different surfaces. Because the surfaces were differentiated uh, through classes uh, by uh, Jonathan, it's, I have a very easy job to do. Even more, the cladding and the siding is so nicely modeled, so I um, have to drop over surfaces only wood shaders from the basic library of Atlantis. I'm just uh, putting another shader on the floor here. Okay, uh, the window panes uh, should be also mapped with uh, different shaders. So whenever I'm dropping a shader over a surface, the inspector will highlight the settings for that shader. And here I can start to make changes. For example, to change the orientation of the texture. Or um, I can work out the shininess uh, of the material to work out the reflectiveness of the surface to continue to set up the bump, transparency and so forth. All those shaders which are set up with the help of an image file that has a nice pattern can be opened and manipulated in the shader editor. So it's uh, even I can set up my own shaders with any based on any texture uh, taken by me with my digital camera, for example. It's uh, very easy and um, um, interactive because the preview always will show you uh, the um, changes. Of course, there are different type of shaders uh, organized in different categories, subcategories. I'm dropping now uh, coating over here once again, and then I continue to manage the roof. Continue with the shaders. The roof certainly is a kind of um, stainless steel, let's say. Click to detect the surface, which is set off a color. And I will prepare this time uh, everything based on colors only. So there is a diffuse color it has. There is a reflection. And it's good to give a little bit of reflection to most of the surfaces. It makes them more alive. A shininess. There is a shininess, but not so important. Okay, let's do for this value. And the refraction, these are the settings for any color shader, let's say, um, to uh, set up realistic surfaces. There are some nice shortcuts uh, through which I can easily drag and drop uh, the same shader over uh, selected uh, neighboring surfaces. And let me drop the same uh, still over this part of the building, which is supposed to have the same uh, cladding. Okay, there are some solar panels at the top of the roof. It's a good opportunity to show you the way we can use textures in uh, Atlantis. Any type of texture can be used. So uh, each time I'm dropping something, the preview is refreshing, refreshing, and uh, showing me the differences, the novelties, uh, the new outlook of my model. 
So dropping uh, texture for uh, it comes, it comes, a little bit of shininess as the sun shines into this roof part, we start to have a better and better outlook for our scene. Of course, we are just at the beginning of our work, so I'm continuing with this um, little texture. I've just took with the, from the internet, really. I googled the uh, solar um, panels, and this was the best I chose. Okay, this way. So it's mapped over one of the panels. I can choose, for example, when I'm working with textures, how uh, I would like to map it. Okay, drop it. Increase its size, that's it. Good. I will uncheck the proportionality to be able to change its size only in one direction. And then all I have to do is to repeat it in both ways. And here is our solar panel. Done. And we can set the different settings for uh, this texture. Why not give it a bit of reflectiveness, take back the shininess, uh, use the bump from the texture to make it more realistic. So I'm ready to continue. Whoops, something bad happened here. No, it's fine. Nothing bad happened, just the refreshment wasn't fast enough. Okay, so I'm ready to continue with the lower part of the building. Because here, if I understood well, most of the parts are set up of uh, concrete. But first, uh, let me add a texture over the mesh, which represents uh, the lawn, the, the, the land. Atlantis uh, already provides a 3D grass shader that is nicely calculated in the final render, or we have uh, simple textures Com combination of two different um, pattern uh, which can be mixed and dragged to simulate a realistic surfaces. There are an other section with the construction materials. So then we can uh, really set up uh, materials uh, which are supposed to be in concrete, the different types. I'm just dropping. Uh, new materials, and Atlantis is really working, working, I hear my uh, my computer is uh, very heavily uh, following my steps. Okay, so Little by little, let's say that this big chapter of materials starts to be finished, not completely, however. Uh, this is a chapter that never ends, in fact, uh, because uh, all the time you will find something that wasn't well prepared. You need a little bit of detail to be improved. But let's continue, however and enlarge the preview just to have a better look and it's time to prepare a nice camera position to set up uh, a final rendering that is closer to the realistic uh, presentation. So what can we do now? First of all, the position of the camera, what I would like to emphasize the whole building, first of all, uh, the general outlook of the building to understand its construction. It means that the most of the part is included in the rendering. There is uh, quite enough room to uh, let the building breathe in the rendering, let's say. And it's time to uh, work out then the sun, the heliodome, the environmental lighting. 
the inspector for the environmental lighting um, is displayed. The drawer will um, list all the suns which are um, ready for this file. For the moment, I have only one that I can manipulate manually. And in the moment this sun appears in the preview, I can simply drag it in the sky and drop it wherever to set up a nice uh, sunset scene. But this time I would like to make something uh, which is realistic and I will create a new sun, duplicate it, call it day, give it a name, right click to activate it for a current view and change the sun type because I would like to do an exact sun study. And when I want to do a sun study, it means that I have to locate my project on the globe. Therefore, I have a huge list. Let me choose Wellington from Jonathan Is, and certainly this building will be located. But if it's not Wellington exactly, I have the possibility to add new locations with the exact geographical coordinates. I can even manipulate the north and then choose an hour of the day, a period of the year, and uh, edit even some clouds in the air. So let me activate the clouds, reorganize the amount of clouds that can be reorganized again with a dice so forth to um, prepare a nice physical sky behind our model. However, I have a problem here because uh, as uh, you can note, the mesh doesn't cover the whole horizon, so it's, it's only a part of it. It means that I have to complete it. Either I complete it with uh, uh, adding an infinite ground, a horizontal plan that goes until the horizon, either, and this time I will apply a background photo, whatever G-pad you wish, and I will choose mine. I already chose one. I thought it's quite appealing with beautiful clouds in the air, in the background, and I will apply it uh, right uh, to my scene. While the dialogue is open, I can even drag, move in the background this photo, find the bad location for it. Let me go for something like this. I can work out the brightness let me brighten up a little bit the background, make it match with uh, my scene. Okay, this is this is always like this. Whenever you are doing presentation, you always change your mind a little bit of here, a little bit of there. No, I will lock my camera. No more fine tuning of my uh, uh, view. I continue by completing my scene, make it even more realistic with some objects. And let me introduce you to the objects of Atlantis, which are organized on layers. For the moment, I have one layer with the building itself. I will create a new layer, name it, okay? And I have the possibility to customize it, make it select everything that is planned. So, in the catalog of Atlantis, we already have a different type of 3D object featuring furniture, uh, lamps, having light source included, cars, whatever type, and uh, of course, plants. So, among from these plants, I will drag and drop into the scene the first little plant. Here it is. I will enlarge it. Putting it in front of the camera, I can give uh, more profoundness uh, to my, uh, uh, my view. So this is the first time I'm opening this uh, 2D window. Okay, to better position this little plant and even drag a copy of it. I will enlarge it and I'm still masking a little bit. I'm masking a little bit the, uh, how to say, 
no this is the one this is the one this uh, lower part uh, with this uh, columns so maybe it's not uh, so 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 nice the focus certainly is in the upper part where the people are spending their most of their time oops here it is make it lower enlarge it just we are visualizing we are preparing rendering so we are really uh, relying on our eye and because some of the plants can behave separately up to a season if i change it they will flourish mm -hmm. it's nicer and let me put at some trees i have a tree somewhere i I, I don't know, this is my tree I like. Drag and drop. Let me take again the 2D window. I need only the leaves. Just an idea of a tree, just an idea of uh, uh, surrounding. It's floating in the air. Never mind, right click, apply gravity. It means it will automatically detect the closest surface. Mm, yes. I didn't drag a copy. I just simply dragged my existing tree. So I, I like these leaves here at the left-hand side. So now let's say that um, give a bit time to finish the refreshment of the rendering of this view and maybe this would be my first presentation which uh, aims to show the complete building the entire site a little bit of surrounding and so forth okay so it's time to do a second presentation to show you more uh, what Artlantis can do. Therefore, I will duplicate the present camera view and start to make changes. This time I will unlock the camera because it will be a different view. I will get closer to my building and generally the closer we are, the more details we need. So we will see more of this balcony then uh, I will apply new objects, for example, a table. Let me add a new layer. And um, mm, 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 mm. anyway, I call it layer and drop different time, type of items on it. And I have a table already prepared with chairs and everything. and um, a barbecue so let me put on the balcony open the 2d uh, window and set these uh, items rotate them small icons will help me to easily manage object and because they are so flexible whenever you are preparing uh, anything in uh, uh, any visualization in Atlantis then uh, it's uh, recommended to use uh, mm -mm, the barbecue machine is upside down okay that's it now it's good so it's recommended to use uh, Atlantis objects why not because they can be very easily manipulated, changed. You can change their shaders as well, as I will change the shader for these uh, tables, chairs. Click to the shader inspector, select the color of the chairs, change it, and the refreshment, when it's ready, you will note how easy it is to um, work with the objects of Atlantis even more 
these objects being organized on layers, if for this uh, presentation I don't really need, and because I'm getting closer and I want to use a different background, I will discard all the trees, all the plants which are at the surroundings. How to do that? Back in the perspective, each camera can be customized uh, based on layers. Here is the little list of layers. And this time I will uncheck that with plants. They are completely disappeared. So organizing uh, objects through layers offer you the possibility to create multiple variations to your presentations. Just think at an interior, whenever you would like to set up a different type of uh, interior furnishing, you organize your objects on layers and uh, making them appear and disappear based on different views, you will easily achieve uh, your goal inside the same file. So this um, great uh, function of Atlantis is to be able to group uh, different type of settings for each camera view um, is, is the key of um, different uh, variations for the same project. So this time I said I would like to use a different background and this background will be an HDRI image what, um, which uh, will cast light for my scene. So first of all I will delete the present uh, background, the 2D, win, 2D image, the, okay, and uh, even discard the light, no sun at all nothing. I'm just uh, uh, will use the HDRI. So once again open the dialog for the um, background and look for an HDRI. I'm just um, uh, it's a kind of a hundred megabyte size image which will be rubbed all over the model and this way it will also provide a great uh, background image and at the same time, if the light uh, casting is checked, it will emit light. And of course, I'm able to manipulate the position of this background. This is what I will do. Choose uh, the part with these uh, three as if a huge tree was close to my uh, building. Okay. And to extract most of the information, I need to check the enhanced background because at this moment, the whole sky dome, which is represented by the HDRI, will turn into an emissive surface and will cast light and this light uh, will be extracted. I'm fine-tuning, oh the brightness is too much of the background. Okay, it's much better now. It starts to be better and better. I need to calibrate my camera like a real photographer. So fine-tuning my camera here and there a little bit uh, will help me to um, adjust the light for the um, scene itself. Okay, I didn't uh, increase the light emission uh, of the HDRI, which now uh, is taken into account separately with pixel by pixel, with the brightness and with the, the color of the pixel itself. So, let, hmm, less and more. Okay, uh, what more we need? We need to give a reflectiveness to the glass. It was omitted. So uh, let me do that and increase the shininess to maximum and give the refraction, make it a real glass. And in a moment when the scene uh, will be uh, refreshed, we will have even reflections of the surrounding. So the, the 
image, in fact, of the background image uh, of the, the HDRI uh, will appear and will enrich even more uh, our little C. So I think most of the job was done in uh, Atlantis. That was my goal so far. And uh, maybe it's time to update the project with uh, the changes Jonathan certainly had the time to finish. So I will save my file. Here it is, it's saved and even close it and uh, wait for the changes by Jonathan. Okay, I'm going to share Jonathan's screen for a second so we can see how he applies the changes to his model. So, I was having a look at my steel structure and I realized I'd made some mistakes. So, I'm going to go back to uh, having a look at my steel structure. So, it's this column here that's in the wrong place. There's also a column missing just where uh, El Deco put in the barbecue. So. I better fix those. Let's go back to a top plan view. There it is there. So that column and so it's that column and that part there. I just want to get rid of that. These two parts here, I need to drag those. They should really be on that intersection there. That's better. Now I also noticed that this column here needs to be repeated. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it into my next layer up. We're going to make that gray, go to the next layer up. I'm going to paste that one in place. Uh, there it is there. I need to set it down by minus about six inches. Set that down. And in fact, it's not one of those columns anymore. It's actually a steel tubing. It's a metric size and it's 89 by 89 by six. So there it is there. And now we see that my column goes too high. I need to know what height this beam here is. This beam should have an under, an under yeah, set to the bottom. It's 2400, so I just need to select my column and change the height of my column. 2400, that should get it to the underside. There we are. So I've made those changes. Now what I need to do is to export that again for Ildico. So I go back to File, Export. I go Export, Atlantis Export. I forgot, I realized I forgot to do this last time, so I'm going to update the file, but I did do it. Uh, so that Ildico has got the file I need. But this time what I do is I update the existing file. Click on OK. Uh, Ildico, you might want to talk about whether we actually need to do the update or the new file, because I think we're, what you're showing might have some effect. I, so I will do the update, so uh, you can do that too, but uh, because uh, I have the Atlantis file, um, it's better to, <laughs> uh, to be done by me. So please yep. save a new file, a second file with a different name, of course. Cool, and, so uh, I save that. This is going to be the updated one. Um, and I've got a place here to put it, so I update my file and I replace the old one. So I'm just I'm just creating a brand new uh, Atlantis export. You'll notice, I, like as I said, I forgot to do this last time, but you'll notice it's reasonably quick to export that again. And then back to Ildico, and you can now take it over and you can finish it off. Yes. All right. So back again. Okay. I already opened the file uh, Jonathan sent me and let's check the beam. Here it is. And now what we will check, whether the barbecue machine uh, is in the wrong place. So. To update my previous work, I will go file, use a reference file from inside of Atlantis. This uh, is the same uh, function you can reach from inside of the um, export uh, of VectorWorks as well. And on the desktop, I have this uh, file with the name 11111. Okay. And in the options at the bottom side, I have the possibility uh, to replace shaders for all surfaces and to check whether I would like to, I will do for everything, replace uh, the sun 
Yes, of course, and add the additional sons from this file, objects, camera views, and so forth. Everything. Let's go for everything. And here we are with the already prepared two camera views, the locked one. Oops, oops, oops. I'm afraid it's a graphic card issue in my computer. It needs a bit time to refresh. Here appears in the uh, background, for the background, I have the HDRI, here it is. It shows it was updated, it was taken, the preview and the thumbnails, uh, which is a kind of graphic card uh, duty. Mm -mm -mm. So in the meanwhile time, let me show you the final renderings which uh, were rendered based on uh, this uh, file. Here is uh, the general view. This is the HDRI view with the background and uh, the nice reflections over the putting in evidence this um, part of the family house. This is an interior uh, with a few uh, objects from the library of Atlantis for the same house is a suggestion. I don't know if the owners will agree with it, but this is how you can communicate your ideas, making them realistic. It means that uh, the future customers can, um, um, how to say, um, imagine if they were there, how they will feel inside this interior. And the same additional Atlantis renderings uh, I'm showing you. Uh, this is a, a view uh, prepared uh, from SketchUp because Atlantis collaborates with uh, most of the modelers. It needs a companion. It needs uh, Vectorworks, for example, because the 3D model is built over there. So everything that is 3D can be imported into Atlantis and set up presentation. And these export, dedicated export plugins uh, are um, at your disposal uh, for an easy uh, communication between the two applications. If you download the trial version, that is um, a fully functional version during 30 days, you have access to the complete library part, the default library of Atlantis with almost uh, 1,500 objects. So you are welcome to test, to try out, uh, to download the export plugin for Vectorworks, which is uh, available um, for you, free download uh, from the Atlantis website. So I encourage you to try it out yourself, and I'm looking forward to your questions. If I do have a question for you, Ildiko. Okay. Um, I've had a question about whether you can demonstrate a walkthrough feature with Atlantis. You mean uh, animation? I think so. <laughs> okay. Animation. Okay, what I will do, I will uh, save this file. And, and, unless you've got one that's pre-prepared, I don't mind. I, I just thought that... Um, and if reopen you had one that you could show how how one creates an animation or a walkthrough. Quit Atlantis. Okay. And reopen it. Um, there's also a question about those pendant lamps that are hanging down in that video in that view that you had. The lighting, whether the lighting was from Atlantis or SketchUp. It's uh, all is Atlantis light. Yes, the lights are from Atlantis. Oh, yes, it starts to come. I'm so happy. <laughs> Whenever it... 
So when the, it refreshes, the thumbnail will also be, when the preview finishes the refreshment, the thumbnail will also be refreshed and so forth. So uh, let me add, this is the one, this is the other one. I will add to the sequence list now. So Atlantis is uh, able to do perspective views, still image uh, renderings, parallel views, uh, which uh, uh, where you can uh, have uh, front views, top views, xenometries of different type, and prepare, uh, save them um, at an exact uh, scale. So this is very important because uh, this time you can add it to your building license. You can the scale uh, appears only for the panel views function. Okay, you can prepare uh, site insertions. If you have a nice background photo, you can manage in a way and only graphically to simulate the building in its future site. You can do panoramas, VR objects, and you can also do animations. So let me check here what we can do. Change, and most of the time the customization goes the same way. So uh, simply, I will convert it into a white model to make uh, a kind of flight shoe. Okay, and uh, uh, now I have an extra palette, which is the timeline, and I'm working on this timeline to set up uh, paths for the camera, for example. So uh, this time the path should be managed in the um, 2D window. I will do a, no, this is the angle. No, I don't want to change the angle. I would like to change the focal, here it is. In all views. up. yeah. No, come on. I want to see the model and to generate a kind of flight shoe. Okay. So, good. So I'm starting from here and I will um, create a path for the camera, activating the edit path mode and drag the camera This is my graphic card, it starts to be, no. Delete path, okay. Uh, Ildiko, I've, I've just been chatting with one of the um, people watching the video, <clears throat> watching the presentation. He said that he is, he's done one of these previously. He said it was really awesome, the, the presentation. <laughs> Thank you. I just wondered whether you had a, a walkthrough that's already been done that you could just, instead of showing how it's made, just uh, mm -hmm. a video that you've already got. I, uh, it, it's unfair, we haven't asked you to prepare for this, so um, it's, I just think it's a little no, unfair. I want to do it for you. I wish to do it for you. That's great, Eldico. <laughs> thank you yeah. for yeah. Thank you for yeah, okay. raising up to the challenge. And we will see now what what we did. So we did a kind of walk in and out of the building. So the path was done. You can work it uh, in all sides. Mm -hmm. So you generate a path and um, you edit it and afterwards you can put keyframes, so you can add uh, different things. Uh, you can uh, actually 
animate many things in Atlantis. You can even create a sun study, creating actions to the sun uh, by recording it with the help of uh, these keyframes. Uh, these actions can be recorded and uh, different period of the days, years uh, can be simulated with the different uh, changes of the sun and so forth. So these are the capabilities of Atlantis in terms of um, uh, all presentation modes, in fact. Ildiko, I've just got one question that needs answering that I can't answer. And it said that the question is that I'm due for a new iMac. Do you have a recommendation for a graphics card that works best with Atlantis? Should I buy the best that Apple offers? Uh, if you check our website, um, you can um, um, see that the graphic card is not um, a key feature for Atlantis because Atlantis uh, um, works most of the time uh, with the processors. So whenever the graphic card is manipulated, it is, is done to open a file to build up a geometry and um, to, to make it in the, the preview, to make display it in the preview. So whenever you change the model or you rotate the model, that's the graphic card. That's why it was um, a hard time with the, the, the great views because the GoToWebinar also relies on your graphic card. Uh, in the rest, um, the um, calculation of the final rendering is done by the processor itself. Therefore, um, a two gigabyte memory graphic card is enough um, generally to uh, for Atlantis and it's not even specified the type of the card the, because um, any card can do it so it's not necessary you have to go for the best best the most expensive one so please uh, check out the Atlantis um, system requirements uh, on the Atlantis website first of all and uh, download the trial version and try it out. Yeah, and, Thank and you. I want to, Not yeah, to I also want to uh, point out that if you're not sold out on Mac at Novage.com, we also have a great CAD workstation uh, or a laptop that we can completely customize for whatever you need. And they, if you need Atlantis and back to works, we can deliver them to you preloaded with the software and it's going to be the best combination possible. That's it. Mm -hmm. I look so much better with the column supporting the bar, that part of the roof. <laughs> Indeed. Yes. Beautiful. <laughs> no, it's a very credible because even the column yes i love the reflection on the windows it's that really does help doesn't it absolutely so yeah. the, the 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 thing with modeling in vectorworks was that in order to get the i mean this this is for every cad program anyway it'll decode that you can't get the things you want unless you model them i can't get the different i can't get the flashings on the side of the roof unless I model them. I can't get the gutter or the downpipes unless I model them. You, you can't get those things for free. Uh, yes, that's that's true. However, um, for example, um, the, um, the cladding, the siding you modeled, that's beautiful. And this is the best because uh, now uh, there's a real 3D effect what we can achieve uh, having a real model. But if you do not have enough time to do that um, and you really just uh, put one uh, straight wall, but you are supposed to do a siding on it, then uh, even the Atlantis uh, shaders are able to um, simulate this type of um, finishings because um, uh, now I'm browsing the library. I can even uh, enlarge it um, and the different uh, subcategories uh, are there. For example, the bricks and so forth, um, the bump and the normal map at which um, add, um, contributes uh, the outlook of the shader will provide you this uh, 3D feeling, this real 3D feeling of the surface. 
So it's a kind of a, um, suggestion of Atlantis, how to help you out uh, to get uh, ready faster with your model and uh, for the visualization side to complete it uh, with the Atlantis shaders and objects as well as I already showed you. That's great. If you need a job done in a rush and then, you know, you go over to modeling afterwards, but in the meantime, you have something to show for. That's cool. Not to undermine the, the 3D modeling job that it's definitely required. <laughs> for so Absolutely. Job. Without that, Atlantis can nothing to do. So <laughs> it's useless <laughs> Atlantis without the 3D model. It takes two anyway. to tango. As we yeah. Say. Yeah, but uh, we generally say that the architect, uh, when it starts to the 3D model, is very anxious to make it very precisely. And uh, you need to do that because the building construction uh, documentation will be done based on that model. So it should, it has to be very precise. While the visualization part is a complete different approach, it's much more applies on your feelings, on um, uh, what would you like to, uh, to make feel the, the client, what the client is supposed to, to feel, uh, how he will um, appreciate your, uh, it's it's much more relies on, on the eye, on, on the feelings, and uh, that makes it different. So even a slight model, which is not completed yet, it doesn't have the preciseness you need for the construction documentation, will be enough because uh, these uh, little settings of Atlantis are helping you in this direction to create a mood, to create an atmosphere, to co communicate uh, the 3D of your model, the general uh, outlook uh, uh, inside the atmosphere. So uh, this is what is the communication of uh, architectural uh, project is about while the preparing the model that's a precise job absolutely great you I couldn't have said it better <laughs> so um, yeah I don't think we have any other questions um, so uh, if you guys are done I'm considering taking the screen back just to let everybody see um, our web page, novage.com. And in, I want to inform everybody that we have a special promotion going on around until the end of the month. So do like Ildiko suggested, download the free trial, test it, hurry up, because before the end of the month, you can get Atlantis 2020 and uh, with the $100 discount, which is not a little you know discount and you just have to prove that you have um some sort of version of back to works where you know we're not that picky we just need to know you are users and uh this uh recording um will be posted later on on youtube and vimeo so if you want to watch it again share with colleagues uh partners uh bosses it's always um there for you to watch on demand and free. Um, thanks again, uh, you two. That was a great teamwork. I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased uh, of the way you presented today. It was very entertaining and uh, it showed uh, a great deal of cooperation. And uh, thank you so much, Jonathan. Uh, you can thank start. You your, yeah, you can start your very early day. And uh, Eldico, <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> Have a great rest. Thank you. <laughs> and, That's a uh, nice experience, really. <laughs> great. Tomorrow. Thanks, Ildiko, I learned quite a lot. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, Jonathan. Very, very enlightening. Bye bye. And everybody. you made my model look so nice, too. Yeah. <laughs> bye bye, everybody. And um, bye bye. see you again soon. Bye bye. Goodbye.